In addition to high quality learning and teaching, transformational principles build effective school cultures by maintaining high performance expectations that nurture their students, while also fostering an environment that celebrates learning and effort. As a component of the transformational leadership framework, the school culture category contains ways in which leaders can implement a culture that is positive, productive, and intentional in the way it supports both academic and social emotional learning. Culture and climate was very important for me when I came in. I was able to see different aspects of the climate and culture of a school building. Uh, being a former teacher myself, I uh, understand how critical it is for the school to be able to have a culture of high expectations, uh, and those expectations are communicated uh, to our parents and to the community and to any partner that comes into Nobel. One of the things that, uh, uh, that I want to instill uh, in our students and our teachers also is building that rapport and creating an environment in which our students feel comfortable and want to be here at Nobel. My students see that and, and it has really evolved my relationship with them to a point that they know that I have extreme high expectations for them to be successful uh, and to achieve whatever goals they want to set for themselves, and that we're going to support them. How does a principal create a culture where everyone, from staff to students to families, buy into the school's mission? The levers of this category can help principals take the necessary steps to instill in others the values and behaviors that are critical for an achievement-oriented and college-ready school culture. To foster the kinds of relationships that build trust and efficacy among staff and students, and to integrate and engage families and the larger community into the school's mission of improved student achievement. The key to the first lever of school culture is how a principal is able to not only bring others on board to his or her vision for school improvement, but to actively seek their input and to create a collaborative vision for success so that everyone is invested in that vision. Principal Dokal of Powell Elementary in DC was able to do that when she first became principal. When I was selected as principal of Powell Elementary after paneling, one of the actions that I took was to do an entry plan. I developed a set of questions that would help me assess the current state of the culture of um, staff readiness, student readiness with curriculum assessments, hopes and dreams, and I set up interviews with the staff with the parents and with the students, any that wanted to meet with me. All of that led to an envisioning exercise in which we collaboratively created the vision and the mission of the school. Transformational principles do this by working with stakeholders to define common values and then by translating those values into tangible behaviors and expectations. At Hamilton Elementary Middle School in Baltimore, Maryland, Dr. Drummond has ensured that the school's core values and behavioral expectations, dubbed the Hamilton High Fives, are not only displayed and practiced, but modeled and demonstrated throughout the school. The Hamilton High Fives are five key characteristics and indicators that our students, we want to see our students embody in order to have a safe and productive and uh, learning environment that is good for all children. So they say it every morning, I will be honest, attentive, well-mannered, kind, and studious. And then they follow up with a creed, I can succeed, I want to succeed, and I will succeed. And so we say that as a whole school and we say it every morning. We also have um, posters around the building that indicate and demonstrate how the high fives look in various places. So how does being honest look in the bathrooms? Or how does it look at recess? Or how does it look in the cafeteria? Yeah. The noise level is a little too high. Jalen, thank you very much. You're, you are being very cooperative today. Here at Hamilton, we have formal structures so that our students uh, are well behaved. In the morning, every day, they do the Hamilton Pledge to remind them of the behaviors each day. We also are involved in the PBIS program, which is Positive Behavior Intervention and Supports, to try to reinforce positive behavior. 
And the students um, really know those characteristics. You know, and our challenge is to help them live up to that every day, from the four-year-old in pre-K to the 14-year-old in eighth grade. And it gives us um, a way to have conversation um, using this common language with all of the students, even from pre-K. They understand what it means to be attentive. Uh, we know that they're successful to help students because we have, um, the, actually the behaviors are monitored. Also we have um, different celebrations each month. Uh, and weekly celebrations to ensure that students um, are in fact being rewarded for their positive behavior. Let me see who's doing an awesome job. All right, so Hawk Buck Table contest goes to the red group. Let's give them a hand. So let's see. Working with others to instill these values among staff and celebrate student achievement also contributes to a supportive school culture for teachers and students alike. I think one of our biggest successes is that we have created a culture where academic success is celebrated, it's recognized, it's important, and students want it. So they just generally, our students respond really well to that recognition. So we are constantly trying to celebrate both academic achievement and academic growth. One main way that we do that school-wide is through our weekly family meetings. I cannot tell you enough just how proud I am of you and the tenacious, focused, courageous student you have become. A healthy achievement-oriented school culture is also reinforced when the principal and staff consider students' social-emotional development and make it a part of the academic program of the school so that students, staff, and families recognize how these skills support academic achievement. Fighting is not the solution. Repeat. Fighting is not the solution. Thank you with the hand movements one more time. Fighting is not the solution. The second lever in school culture includes actions that ensure principals and their staff are responsive to and respectful of the diversity in their schools. We dedicate significant resources and time to just dealing with um, the curriculum that's laid out by Welcoming Schools, which is our, our SEL. Um, curriculum and program and we use that time as a staff to sit together and to discuss diversity, discuss issues of justice and equity and discuss our own our own biases and then translate this into a curriculum that's accessible to students from our kindergarten class to our fifth grade class. We also work with students and in the classroom we bring that curriculum and the teachers uh, work together to, to teach these lessons on SEL and on diversity. Meaningful engagement with parents and families is the third lever of school culture. Transformational principles need to ensure that families and the community at large are considered key partners in achieving the school's instructional goals. Necessarily, and what I think makes us unique is that we have um, really strong parent leaders and we have very strong student leaders. So our fifth grade students... In Oakland, California, Principal Leroy Gaines and the staff of Acorn Woodland Elementary have taken steps to ramp up their family engagement by making parents leaders in the school and true partners in the classroom. It's a good combination of high expectations, fun, and also a sense of urgency. It's nice when you're in a building with people who enjoy the work and enjoy being around students and families. It's a social center for our community right now, and that, that makes me very proud of our, our, our school culture. Parent engagement here at Acorn has it's evolved over the years. In the beginning, we were, we were just excited that parents were coming to the school and were engaging in our, our, you know, our meetings that we were having. Before, parents weren't engaged in school at all. Um, they would rarely come to school. You wouldn't see parents very regularly during the day. And now we see parents on Fridays here in the assemblies. We see them in the mornings when they're dropping off their kids. We see them after. They're just a lot more present. And not only that, but they hold you accountable. So it's, it's, it's very powerful and very different from what we've had before. Over the last few years, we've lost a number of grants. With the grants, we've lost a number of support staff. And we, I brought this to the families and I shared this with them. This is the state of the school. What do we do? If we want to maintain the program, we're going to need volunteers. We need human resources. And now we have 24 parent leaders at the school site, each one 
in charge of a certain area of, of the programming, whether it be our snack program or being in charge of communicating what the school is doing to their families. As a parent leader on a normal day, I'm all over the school. I support the salad bar. I support the fresh fruit and vegetable program. I like to be in my son's class. So anything that they like to get me involved, if I have the time and I can, I do. We've definitely built more parent engagement by providing very specific ways for parents to come engage. I think they feel more welcome now because we've created structures for parents to participate, identifying parents that are available to help, getting parents excited about participating in a way that feels comfortable for them. Parents who decide to participate in ACORN's Parent Leader Program must attend a series of sessions in which they are trained on how to contribute to instruction and student learning. Every month, the parent leaders come together with our family coordinator and they engage in workshop. Often those workshops are based in literacy and, and teaching literacy skills and how to support not just their child um, at home, but actually all the children in the classroom. There's often times when you walk into our building and you see the parents, you see the teachers, and you can't really tell who's who. That's something that we take a lot of pride in that our parents feel confident enough and our teachers have enough confidence in our parents to allow them to do that work and to support in that way. Parent feedback is another crucial element to the efficacy of ACORN's Parent Leader Program. Both parents and leaders respond to surveys about engagement and the leadership uses that information to plan accordingly. So one way that we track our, our, the efficacy of our family program here at ACORN Woodland is um, through an annual survey. So we send the survey out to the parents, um, the parent leaders complete the survey, and our teachers also complete the survey and, and ask some general questions around parent engagement. And we take that information and disaggregate it and use that to actually plan for the next year. The expectations are actually pretty high for a parent leader. And the biggest thing that we're looking for in a parent leader is just the dedication, the time, and the commitment to the parent leadership program. I never thought I'd be this involved in my son's school. But um, actually, he's the one that motivates me because last year I just started like volunteering in his class for a little bit, and then that's when I got offered the parent uh, leader. And I was kind of nervous about it, but he's the one that was like, yeah, mommy, you know, you should. I want you in my class. They understand the role that we play in, in supporting their children. So this, we have a codependency, I suppose you could say. My parent leaders have really saved me this year um, because we've taken on such teacher-created curriculum. We're creating a differentiation model for phonics, for reading, for math. It requires a lot of organization and it's not something I can do by myself. We depend on them for the operation of our school and our teachers depend on them and their partners in the work. So they go through basically like a, a mini teacher institute <laughs> to understand these, these foundational reading skills. The Parent Leader Program at Acorn Woodland demonstrates how invaluable it is to build a meaningful partnership with families to help support a school culture that is oriented towards student achievement. Therefore, a transformational principal must ensure that his or her staff is capable of implementing the instructional strategies effectively and enacting the shared vision and mission of the school.